Mr. Craig, una. Go, Mr. Craig. The United States today is threatened with many acts of racial violence, both by internal disorder, both by a foreign element such as uh, Robert F. Williams, formerly of North Carolina, is now in China. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that it would be a parched earth here in America if the white man and the black man starts open warfare in this country. Do it. Yes, Mr. Craig. Stop. Partito. Partito. Yep. We speak of racial equality. There is no such thing. As you well know, the white man's culture is altogether different than the black man's. While the white man was in Europe thinking about advancing his race, the black man, in being in Africa, at no time has any history uh, been brought forth that he has tried to cultivate his race whatsoever. Wild animals that he could have built a uh, harness for, there's no, no, wait a minute, we're getting all messed up on that. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Partito. Cuatro. Okay, Mr. Craig. But as an example, let us compare the Negro here in America living in a segregated society and one living in an integrated society. Here in Atlanta, where the Negro has had to live in this so-called segregated society, he has ac accumulated a tremendous amount of wealth. There are more Negro who own their own homes in Atlanta, Georgia, per capita than any city in the world. There are more Negro-owned businesses in Atlanta, Georgia, per capita than any city in the world. The first FDIC chartered bank was the Citizen Trust Company here in Atlanta, owned and operated by Negroes. The first Negro-owned operated radio station was an Atlanta-owned operated radio station. There are more Negro colleges located in Atlanta, Georgia, per capita than any city in the world. All of this tremendous wealth for the Negro people has been achieved under a segregated society. Cities like New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, Detroit, which has had integration now for over 100 years, cannot come up with such brilliant uh, standards of Negro uh, accomplishments as far as wealth is concerned in the community. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that the Negro in his community lives altogether different than the white man does. When he goes to sit down to eat, he thinks of different type of food ordinarily not eaten by white people or eaten by the white society. There's no difference if you take in consideration that every Negro in the city of Atlanta has an opportunity to go to a university, yet many of them accept that opportunity. There's few Negroes that has ever achieved the successful ladder, regardless of where they're from, that they could have achieved. As you well know, throughout the United States today, there are a considerable number of elected Negro officials, but Atlanta, Georgia has more Negro elected officials than any other city in the United States. Again, we state that has been a achieved under a segregated society. Stop. Still. Okay. As it, I have brought out that every human being was created by God. He put the black man in Africa and a white man in Europe. He put mountains and oceans between each race. But this so-called amalgamation of the races. Okay. You hear much talk about white girls going with Negroes and Negroes, boys going with white uh, girls. Here in the Georgia area, we do not have much 
uh, trouble on that line. We have found when you have uh, different races going with the other races between the blacks and the white, it's always a low class of a white uh, girl or white boy and usually what we call an alley negro. Most of the races in the state of Georgia are very proud of their heritage. They are very proud of their race and certainly they want to keep it that way. As we have previously stated that uh, God created all people. He created the black man black because he wanted him black. He created the white man white because he wanted him white. And we certainly feel that amalgamation of the races is not of God's desire, but of the work of the devil. Yep. Yep. C. Yep. Mr. Craig, do you think there's a sexual difference between the Negro and the white? Certainly they are. The uh, white person is uh, more of a, might say, human being, where the Negro is more like a, an animal instinct as far as sexual relations are concerned. They, they, uh, the Mars is much lower. Partito? Partito? Mr. Craig, sette. Mr. Craig, you used the term before alley negro. Could you please define it for us? Well, the definition of an alley negro to the white man is just like an alley cat. In other words, uh, he will be anybody's cat. He will, uh, he will, he's just a low moral standard person. He, uh, he's filthy in his environment. He's uh, more or less what we also commonly call in the white section is white trash, or in the negro section is an alley negro. Uh, Mr. Craig, uh, you say that they have low morals. Isn't it true, though, that the Negro has been Christianized and has adopted the morals of the Christian church? In a lot of instances, that's true. But also, you can go through the uh, Negro communities, regardless of what city in the United States, and we commonly call what we call ghettos, that they're uh, filthy in their environment. The illegitimacy of the Negro is... Uh, 10 times it is of the white person. They consist of 10% of the population of the United States, and yet they commit over 75% of the crime. So uh, uh, even though they have uh, been uh, closely connected with the Christian church, their morals is still very low below the white man. What, what do you think is the best position for the Negro in terms of the uh, operating within a society? Well, naturally, I feel that the best terms or the, or the possible uh, best advantage of the Negro is to more or less, as uh, far as his actual living in a segregated society, I certainly feel that every Negro should have the opportunity to earn a, a decent living for his family. I certainly feel that he should be given an ample uh, education. I certainly feel that uh, he should be given a lot of opportunities, and but... Uh, he must learn that he must uh, work for these opportunities. He must learn that uh, a welfare state uh, will not benefit the Negro. In other words, he must, uh, in order to achieve the society that he wants, then he must work for it. He must be uh, uh, cultivative in his own race. He must realize that in order for the Negro to continue to gain the educational standards of higher education that he must go through the colleges, he must uh, uh, go through the universities in order to have a better community in where he, where he lives at. He must clean up the environment around his neighborhood. He must see that the filth that is not allowed to remain in his community. He must see that, uh, that if he has a job, that he gives the man an, uh, a day's work for a day's pay. Here in the city of Atlanta, there are hundreds of jobs uh, going today uh, unwanted because uh, uh, many of them can receive just as much on welfare as they can going out here working for a living. So they won't take the jobs where it would be for their advantage if they would work to get off of the living off of the state, then they could get a, a better opportunity and they would be accepted better in the community. Uh, 
apropos what you said before about the Negro being treated as a human being and your own reactions to this, uh, should segregation fail and all universities become totally integrated, and your son or daughter went to such a university and they became close friends with Negroes, how would you feel about that? Because they would be in an environment isolated from that uh, of which they were reared. Well, now you must remember this. I have had uh, uh, very close contact with Negroes all of my life, been raised in a community where there were Negroes living in this community, not as uh, uh, being objected, they was accepted in this community. You might say it was an integrated uh, community. And uh, we always help these uh, 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 old poor Negroes out. But certainly as far as uh, my daughter or son actually going with a Negro girl or a Negro boy, I would be highly objected to it. But as you well know, the American people today has accepted the Negro here in America. They work with them. They uh, ride the uh, uh, trolleys with them. They uh, shop with them and everything else. But when it comes back to the home, naturally I feel the Negro should uh, go to his house and let the white man go to his home. Recently, oh. particular type weapon. Well, it's a, it's a good handy weapon. It's well... Uh, Please show it to us. All right, be glad to. Uh, if, could you give us a situation wherein this idea of self-protection would come into practice? Well, naturally, being a controversial person, if I was ever attacked it or anything like that, I would have uh, uh, my own gun for self-protection. I have uh, a license to, uh, I've got a pistol license, pistol totals license. I'm also uh, a special deputy of the county. So uh, it's, it's just good to have around with all the, of course, personally, I do not never take a gun out on the street. I, I always keep one in my office. Uh, uh, in my home or in my car. But as far as uh, toting one on the street, I never do. Uh, you mentioned before that there was a camp which taught anti-guerrilla warfare or guerrilla warfare. Correct. Uh, where do you get the experience to teach this kind of thing to the uh, people who are students? Well, we have men that... Do uh, you have any affiliation with the Minutemen? None whatsoever. No, or any other group. We're not affiliated with any other group at all. Do you believe that uh, all people should have a weapon? Now, on that question on Dean Rusk, his daughter recently married a Negro. Uh, could you explain how you feel about that and what you think the situation was, whether it was political or otherwise, and the significance of such an act? No, I do not think it was political. In fact, uh, Dean Rust uh, was very objective to it. Uh, he refused to give his daughter away in marriage to this Negro. And uh, as other uh, white and black marriages uh, uh, usually the history of such uh, marriages are never successful, and I certainly do not feel that this marriage will be successful. Is Dean Russ from the north or the south? He is from the state of Georgia in this area. He is a Georgian. Right. Um, Mr. Craig, could you please demonstrate the facility of this gun? A special deputy. Is yes. that a voluntary or is that an appointed position? Uh, that's a volunteer position, yes. Are you involved in politics? Uh, I mean, yes and no. As a candidate? I am not running as a candidate at this time, no. Have you ever? Yes, I have. I run as the state senator and lost that uh, office by 435 votes. You run on your own ticket? No, I run as a Democrat. But is it affiliated with the major Democratic Party? It is affiliated with the major Democratic Party. I see. Have you ever been in the situation to use the gun? No, I you have ever? not. No, I know I have a knife. Um, Mr. Craig, yes, she... Is your family being trained in the use of weapons, Mr. Craig? My daughter, I have a daughter 15 years old, and also my wife are expert shots with a rifle and a shotgun. What about pistol? Well, the pistol, they are fair shots, let's put it that way. And your way. son? My son is only two years old, oh. so, but uh, he will slowly become acquainted with uh, arms. Thank you very much, Mr. Craig. Well, then. There's certainly a fact that all men were created by God, but certainly there is no equality between the black man and the white man. Now we talk for just a moment, is the Negro equal with the white man? 
The Negro culture, no doubt, is based on a different level than the white man's culture. The Negro being raised and reared in the continent of Africa has always thought of voodoo, has always thought of things that's not commonly even known to the white man. And we are having that uh, uh, culture even brought into America today. Even here in the city of Atlanta, many acts of voodoo is being practiced in the Negro community. The Negro, living in one of the richest continents in the world, which is the continent of Africa, having many wild animals that he could have domesticated, there's no known history where he has ever built a harness to domesticate any of these wild animals. He walked barefooted over many uh, natural resources, or mineral resources, such as diamonds and rubies in the continent of Africa. And he didn't have the intelligence enough until the white man came to Africa to regain this natural uh, mineral resources. There's no history where the Negro even built a boat in the continent of Africa until the white man came. But let us bring this fact out, even in the Congo, as long as the white man or the Belgians, Germans or the Dutch had control of the Negro community, they were well kept in check, were being well educated, hospitals were being built, schools were being built, but the minute that they got their uh, freedom or, or, or were, were given the power to set up their own country, they went back to the savagery that their forefathers preached and practiced. Now, why do you have this particular type weapon? Well, it's a, it's a good handy weapon. It's well uh, reinforced. It's, uh, it's a big gun. It's a 44. Uh, uh, I just keep it around for self-protection. 99% okay. of our, our people are ex-service men that have been in the Army, Navy, commanders of the Marine Corps, and they are the ones that our uh, cadres are, ex-Marines. I feel it's a constitutional right for every citizen, regardless if he's black or white, to defend his home, and the best method is to have uh, arms. Well, I'd be glad to. This is a 44 pistol. It's a very... It's a, oh, excuse me, it's a very fast loading pistol, as you can well see. Let me, rapid fire, see how fast you can unload it and load it. By using a 44, see, you can load it very fast, you can unload it just as fast, you can. Uh, before you were mentioned that you had uh, you don't carry a gun personally for yourself, but in your car, in your home. Could you uh, explain to us if ever there has arisen a situation wherein you felt threatened or felt the need of using a weapon? Well, naturally, I get threats all the time, but I have never used a weapon on anyone. I've never uh, uh, drawn a weapon on anyone. In other words, the use of my gun is, to me, is just like any other average citizen. I feel that... Uh, that every citizen should uh, own a gun. I feel it's for his own protection, particularly with the threat of violence throughout the United States. This gun here is what I keep in my office. This is the type of gun I carry in my, my car. It's an automatic weapon that I carry in my car, which is a very, very good gun. And I, I, I must say that I uh, am a good shot with a pistol. You mentioned you were a deputy sheriff. 